think that's everyone uh, joined there now, so we'll be able to get started. So thank you for joining me today. My name's Nathan Garner. I'm the project manager and one of the tech support team leaders here at Dynamic CCTV. Um, today we're going to be taking a look at the new Hag Central version 2.0, which has a whole new user interface on both the web front end of the system, which is kind of like the back end configuration side of things where you'd commission your system, and then also the new user interface on the actual control client itself, which makes it a lot easier for people to use. And there's a new dashboard feature, which allows you to configure your own kind of layouts when you actually open the control client. So operators would then be able to have their own kind of own layout for the actual system. So you can have your reporting showing up in the home page as well as a few different cameras or vice versa, depending what you want to see. So we're going to run through a few slides uh, first, which will have some demo videos as well, uh, just for some of the stuff that I wasn't, be able, wasn't able to set up for this test rig for this demo for this actual solution. And then we'll get on to actually looking at the system, adding devices, going through a few different functions, taking a look at the MPR side of things, facial recognition, stuff like that through this webinar as well. If you have any questions, if you put them in the Q&A section on the Zoom part of things, and then at the end of the webinar, I'll go through all those and answer all those questions, or you can drop me an email. Uh, my contact details are on screen there as well. So what is Hick Central? So many of you will have probably heard of or at least used Hick Central at some point. It is one of the more popular kind of softwares that we've been dealing with recently with more and more installs switching over to the licensed VMS software from Hike Vision instead of the free IVMS 4200 software, which is predominantly aimed at like small installs, whereas Hick Central offers a full management system and gives you the additional kind of functionality that you'd need for a system. So it is a fully integrated software, so you can add all of your Hick Vision devices to this across the board, whether that be video security, the access control, anything like that can actually all be added in Hike Central. It doesn't just need to be a CCTV platform. It does do the access control side of things from Hike Vision as well as attendance reporting, anything like that, which we, we will take a look at today as well. So for smaller installs or where there's already hardware on site, you can use software only licenses. And this is what we use with our secure logic hardware. So this makes it relatively easy where you just purchase a license and get sent a license PDF code to activate the Hike Central software on your system. This is great for when you're just having a small install where you don't need a dedicated backend server. So smaller installs can be installed on an all-in-one PC, as it were, instead of having to use a backend server to run the actual backend of Hick Central. For larger systems, there's the pre-installed server, which is offered as Dell hardware from Hike Vision that's available from ourselves. And there's also our Secure Logic dedicated web servers as well for the Hike Central backend for the system. So this is an overview of the actual architecture when it comes to Hick Central. Many of you will have already seen this um, plenty of times before on our previous webinars or ones hosted by Hike Vision. Um, so this just gives you a general kind of look at what can be added in the system or what can be managed as a whole. So now we've got the ability to also add in the digital signage units. And so these have been quite popular with the temperature screening solutions, uh, as well as the density control solutions where it's displaying the uh, red and green uh, person on the display uh, for entering shops and stuff like that. The digital signage can be also used for advertisement stuff and other things that you want to display on the actual screen. But now that's all been rolled into the Hag Central software, so you can have one platform to manage all the CCTV on site, the digital signage, access control, body worn cameras if you're using the uh, Hag Vision body worn cameras, which have been popular recently. And there's also the facial recognition side of things when it comes to access control terminals or facial recognition cameras with the X model MVRs as well. 
uh, that have the inbuilt facial recognition functionality for the system. Uh, with the RSM, that's an additional server that's different to the standard Hype Central. So if, for example, you had a group of shops and they had a head office somewhere in the country and each of the shops was fairly large, you could have a Hype Central server at each of those sites. And then at the headquarters, you would have an RSM server, which then could add in all those individual Hike Central servers and be fully managed from the RSM at headquarters. So it gives you a complete top-down uh, kind of approach to the system and allows you to apply out any changes across all the Hike Central servers that you have added into the RSM system as well for that. So it makes it a fully scalable kind of solution with the Hike Central platform. With Hike Central, there is quite a few different things that you can actually add into the software itself. So these are broken down into different plugins or modules that you would purchase um, with your licenses. It is one installation package for the main Hike Central, and then your licenses activate the different features and functionality. Uh, depending on what you're needing for the site. So if you only want to be able to do, for example, access control with time and attendance, all you would need is your access control base license and your time and attendance license as well. If you were using the facial recognition terminals and wanted to be able to see the live view of those cameras in Hike Central, then you'd also need camera licenses as well to be able to do that, even though it's an access control device for those. There's also a new integration platform called Optimus. So this is being designed by Hike Vision, which allows Hike Central to communicate with third party systems, such as the Galaxy LAN panels. And there's also going to be further plugins for the um, other access control systems. Uh, such as Paxton, which will also integrate into Hike Central. And what the Optimus software does is basically works as a middleman between Hike Central and the third party software. So it converts the data between the two and keeps everything in sync. And what we'll be doing is we're going to be doing another webinar in two weeks time covering the Optimus solution, showing how that can be used to integrate third party systems into the Hike Central software, and also how you can send data from Hike Central to that third party system. So if you have multiple persons and you've got, um, for example, some access control systems on Hike Central, and you also have some Paxton systems on site with Hike Central and the Optimus software, you could tie everything into one system and manage it all through Hike Central with that as well. So with the Hike Central software, um, there is generally more on the configuration side of things to do than you would with a normal um, IVMS 4200 software. But once the actual system is set up, it's a lot easier um, from an operation point of view and a lot easier in terms of maintenance as well and diagnosing any faults on the system and also be able to track where there is an issue you can also generate maintenance reports through Hike Central. So if, for example, uh, there was a hard drive failure on one of the remote sites, Hike Central can be set up so they'll automatically email engineers. It will even email a weekly report to managers saying which devices have shown failures or faults on the system. So you've got that full accountability kind of things. If something hasn't been dealt with, uh, then you've got a log of what's happened um, and you can actually add notes in on Hike Central. When that event's triggered, saying it's offline, you can add, set up an event and then you can add in your own notes from the operators saying what they did with it, um, did they contact someone uh, or anything like that through Hike Central. Within the actual control clients with 
when you do updates with Hague Central, there's now MSI files available for the control clients, which can be distributed by IT teams and then deployed to the different PCs that need to connect into the actual Hague Central server on site as well. So it is a truly scalable piece of software with Hike Central. Uh, we have systems that just run in two MPR cameras on site and use in the Hike Central platform because they need to edit their playlist for vehicles and they need to keep track of that fully. With Hike Central, you can actually log into a web front end to add in new persons, new vehicles, which makes it a lot easier from a user's point of view. With a standalone MPR system, with an MPR camera, you need to import and export Excel sheets, which when you're having to update platelets frequently, that can be time consuming as opposed to being able to log into a web front end of a device and just enter in those details. That being said, that can also be used on medium to large complicated projects. So you can go up to 3,000 channels of video using the standard Hike Central servers. Above that, you can use RSM or you can use a distributed Hike Central server to get up to 10,000 channels using a distributed server and up to 100,000 channels with the RSM deployment. So you can go from the smallest of installs all the way up to large scale uh, deployments of the actual solution. And it isn't just a video management system. You can do your access control, your time and attendance, uh, digital signage, even visitor management through Hike Central. Um, so it's trying to get over that there is different functionalities that you can actually use the platform for. It doesn't just have to be for the CCTV systems on site for the actual system. And what we've got now is just a quick video showing the new control panels, uh, which are available in the Hike Central 2.0, which makes it a lot easier from management point of views um, and for the operators. So you can see on the actual control client, we've got a window open for the skin surface temperature analysis. We've also got the density control solution set up here, as well as people counting graphing which is the actual, this is displayed on the actual home page of the control client, uh, which we're going to see on our live system in a moment. I'll just let this run through. It can also flag up when an alarm's received through here as well. So you can see how you can click into the different tiles change what date you're actually wanting to show on the actual system itself and that will actually update the tiles in, in real time as that date is updated as well. And you can switch between multiple different uh, control panel views so you can have multiple saved to the actual system. So you can see that one there showing the actual map that's added and configured on Hike Central and then you've got the health monitoring in the bottom right hand corner and also the alarm system as well for those. And that's just now showing the actual access control, so it's showing that it was denied by the actual face recognition, so that was one of the terminals added into the system. So you can see there how in the actual control panel, we can actually configure it to display the live view of one of the cameras or multiple cameras if we wanted to as part of our displays within the actual system. And we can add in different modules to actually use within that control panel, which will come to on our system there as well. So within the Hike Central now, um, there's always been the functionality of being able to run in different kind of reports and more advanced reports than you can do on standalone systems or through the IVMS 4200 software. There's now the new visual reports, which gives you different levels of statistics. So you've got intelligent analysis. So that's for things like frequently appeared persons, your face recognition, and also your heat analysis reports. 
The heat analysis is based on the heat mapping from the fisheye cameras using the new Imavision lens with the actual people counters. You've then also got the access control. So this will give you any results, whether it be a normal access control event, your abnormal. So that would be if someone tried to scan a card and were rejected, or if they were using the rec face recognition terminals. If it's a mismatch face event, then it will also show abnormal on here. And you can actually get the statistics statistical reports um, down in the below and it will give you update these um, on the actual system itself so it makes it a lot easier for people to be able to go in and see the actual um, system as it is and what's currently happening on the system. You've then also got entrance and exit so this is the parking management side of the Hague Central platform using the Hague Vision AMPR cameras as well. So with this, you can actually see the number of vacant spaces that are in the actual car park. And this is based on the what you've actually set up when you've added and created the car park on the Hike Central uh, web front end, which we're going to take a look at as well, because I've got an AMPR camera added to our system today for this. Hagvision have also updated the way that maps work within the control clients for Hag Central. So these can be broken down into multiple different maps and are a lot more interactive um, than they ever used to be. So you can see, see we can switch between different ones and it's going to load this map up for the people counting. So you can see you can use it multiple maps depending on the different areas that you're looking at, whether it be people counting the surveillance side of things. You can also use Google Maps using the Google Maps API integration. You can connect the API into Hag Central. And what that will allow you to do is actually use Google Maps um, for the externals of your building. You could then upload your own maps for internal use and then that would allow you to drill further down into the map. So your top map would be Google Maps and then your floor plans and stuff like that. You can actually upload into the Hague Central platform and that will allow operators to be able to drill down into those maps. So if they see that an alarm's triggered, they'll be able to direct security guards to that area using the maps. Or alternatively, if a security guard radio through saying that there was incident at such and so place in the system. Uh, the operator would be able to see on the map where that is and they'd be able to click on the map camera that's been related to that section on the actual maps which we're going to show on our system as well. So using the Hike Central platform, you can actually link your access, access control systems with the surveillance side of things through the event alarm sections within Hike Central. So if for an example, an unauthorized person tries to get through the doors, either by scanning the, a different card on the system or entering in the wrong passcode or anything like that, you can then link it so that any abnormal access events that are triggered on the access control system will then trigger the cameras that are related to either trigger to take a capture that can actually use if they're PEZs, you can send them to a preset position. So you could actually spin those around to the door that's being triggered by the abnormal event. And you can also do the same with your tampering alerts, stuff like that through the access control system link all that into the surveillance side of things through the Hike Central platform. And then when an operator receives that event, not only do they say that um, there was an abnormal event on the door, it'll actually show through as a capture from that event that's been taken by the cameras that have been related to the actual system on there as well. The same can also be done with visitors with the vehicle linkage. So when a vehicle or visitor comes, they can actually register before they actually attend site. So you can, they can send their plate information over to the site. The admin then 
adds those vehicle details in and assigns access permissions to that vehicle. When that vehicle then tries to drive through, the AMPR camera recognises it through the data that's on the Hag Central server and allows for the barrier to open. They can also then already be uploaded to the face recognition databases or your facial recognition for your persons for the access control side of things. So it allows them to be actually set up as a visitor before they even turn up on site, um, which is great for the new contact free uh, kind of era that we're now living in. Um, it makes it a lot easier when you're managing sites remotely as well. If you have visitors to sites um, around the country and you don't have admin teams or people on site that can allow them access in, you can authorize that before they attend the site, set up all their information on the Hike Central, and they'll just be able to access the authorized areas that you've set up on the system as you've actually done for them. Now, with Hike Central platform, um, you've always been able to do a combined alarm, um, which would allow you to have, say, for example, motion detection on a camera, trigger a user-defined event, which could then activate or arm a secondary VCA, such as line crossing on another camera. But it was done through the user-defined events. Now what Hike Vision have done is they've created a combined alarm section within the new Hike Central 2.0. And this allows for a lot easier configuration and actually gives you a visual representation of those alarms as you're setting them up. So it makes it a lot easier to configure and also a test system and know what you're actually setting up. And you can actually see a visual display of that alarm and event set up on the actual system, which I'll show a demo of um, when we get onto the web client side of things uh, for this. I don't want to bore everyone with uh, lots and lots of slideshows and then not spend as much time on the actual live system for that. In the new Hike Central as well, they've also included the visual tracking, uh, which came in a couple of versions ago. It's now even easier to configure on the new Hike Central 2.0, which we're also going to take a look at. Um, but this allows you to relate cameras to other cameras. So it makes it easier to follow a person across multiple cameras without having to remember camera names um, or the different locations of them. You can simply click on an icon on the camera and it will move on to the next camera and bring up all those cameras within that area. So it makes it a really powerful kind of system and a lot easier for operators and control rooms to be able to actually follow someone, someone across multiple cameras uh, without having to remember exactly where those cameras are, which cameras next, or anything like that with those. So it is a really powerful uh, solution and something that a lot of our customers have been using on various sites as well. So in terms of recording, um, when using the Hague Central VMS. Um, as standard, you'd have your NVRs or DVRs on site, which would record the footage from the cameras locally on each site, and Hague Central can then interrogate that for playback purposes um, or anything that you need for the actual system. And this also works for live view as well. And then you can have Hague Central sat on a remote site and pulling in all those different devices, uh, which is fine as a system um, and works perfectly well. Uh, we do have a lot of sites that have been set up like that. But there's also the P-Star recording platform for Hike Central, which is an additional software which we're going to take a look at. So what this allows you to do is have your NVR on your remote sites. And then you can also have a P-Star record server um, which we sell the SecureLogic storage servers uh, to run our PSTAR software. And this allows you to record all the cameras to the NVR, but you can also mirror all of that footage onto a PSTAR record server. So if, for example, the NVR were to fail, you've got all of that footage backed up on the PSTAR server on the local site. What you can also do is move your 
PSAR server off-site and have a centralized backup at your main headquarters with the Hike Central server as well. So you'd have your NVRs out at your different remote sites. And then at headquarters, you would have your Hick Central server, which is managing everything. You'd then also have a PSTAR recording server. Now, what that can be done is when the, there's less traffic on the network, for example, overnight, it can be configured so that all the footage from the MVRs is automatically uploaded to the actual PSTAR record server. So you've got all that footage backed up. So if there's ever a major incident on site where the MVR fails or it's stolen or anything like that, all the footage is backed up at headquarters on the actual central storage using PSTAR. A system which gives you that reliability and kind of the full redundancy that you need on some large scale systems uh, where they require that as well. And you can also use multiple PSTAR servers. So you don't actually have to use an MVR. You can use a server-based storage system um, using the PSTAR software. So you'd have your cameras on site and those would all be recording directly to a PSTAR server. And then what you can then do is have a second PSTAR server back at headquarters, which would be your central kind of backup system as well um, so it can be used depending on what the needs are for the site or anything like that um, which we can always advise on um, here at dynamic as well so if you have any questions or systems that need this level of security or backups or wanting to have a server-based record system if you could contact us at project at dynamic-cctv.com uh, myself and the rest of the team will be able to help you out uh, we're specifying anything there as well. So if we just take a quick look at any of the alarms using the instance, so you can see there it's got all of our alarm events showing. So we've got a license plate mismatched event, how many of those have been triggered, license matched, uh, fallen down, that's using the uh, advanced analytics side of things so you can actually use cameras that would detect if someone falls down uh, which is really great for the likes of care homes or anything like that or where you need that kind of um, those kind of VCA events to be able to help with the operators um, to try and not as miss uh, any events make sure they're dealt with as quickly as possible And then with the intelligent analysis, uh, this is where your facial recognition side of things would come into play with those, uh, which we're going to take a look at now on a live system, uh, which I'll log into on my laptop. Bear me two seconds. So I'll just move this over to my second screen. So this is the new web front end of the Hike Central software. So you can see the logos change now uh, to the new updated one for 2.0. So if I log in, just as I normally would. You'll then see that we've got a new home page um, for the Hike Central web client, uh, which is quite different to the original one. Um, so I'll actually log into another server, which I have that's still on the original. So that's the new uh, web front end, and this is actually the old one. So you can see between the two, there's quite a difference in the actual design and overall layout of the system. So with 2.0, they've gone from our graphical interface. Um, so you can see this is a default kind of map, but what you can actually do is switch it. So it will actually give you your own map of your building. So you can then put in the different areas where you've got digital signage, your access control and your vehicles. So you can actually click in these to get straight to those menu sections 
instead of having to click through. Um, so it's quick access and it's more graphical user interface, which makes it a lot easier for operators and admins to actually administer the system um, through there as well, which makes it look a lot more modern um, as a VMS software as well. So you can see down the left hand side, our first tab's the maintenance side of things. So you can see our current management servers um, running normally. Um, this is just running locally um, on my laptop currently. And we can click through the different tabs. So we haven't got any of the intelligent analysis set up yet, um, but we are going to configure that as we go through. These are your access control events. So it will say if how many access records has been. So normal would be where it's allowed a person through the door. Abnormal would be if they've stopped them um, or they haven't had the correct credentials. And this is now showing us the actual parking events. Uh, so this is the parking management side of things. Uh, so you can see our capacity is set to 50 and we currently have 20 spaces vacant, uh, but we need to actually relate our MPR cameras to this parking lot, uh, which we're going to do in a moment. And then we've also got the alarm section there as well. So to get to the license side of things, so now that's up in the top right hand corner in maintenance and management. So we can go into update our license or we can see our license details. So if I click on this, you can see I've got 66 camera channels added to the system. And I have the ability to add 18 doors to the software, but I've only got one currently added. So it will tell us what's enabled on our license. So we've got visual tracking enabled, evidence collection, the video intercom system, entrance and exit, uh, digital signage, all that's enabled on this license. What you do also need to do is when you're using MPR cameras, facial recognition cameras or thermal cameras, as long as your license supports it, you have to tell the Hike Central that it is either an AMPR camera or facial recognition and thermal camera. So you can see if I go to configuration here, I've already got my AMPR camera assigned. And I've also got two cameras from the X Model Deep in Mind unit that I've got here um, set up as facial recognition cameras on Hike Central as well. All those. So if we go to the top left hand side, um, so this is our main menu for the web client. So some of the naming conventions have changed now. So what used to be your physical devices and your logical views are now in the resource management tab. So if we click on that, you now see that it's changed now from physical and logical view to device and server and area. So device and server is what used to be a physical um, area and now area is your what used to be the logical view on the actual system. So you can see that I've got multiple devices added in. So I've got our main MPR, I've got a PEZ, MPR camera, one of the external PEZs and an X model deep mind MVR, which we're going to run through for the facial recognition side of things um, as we go through the webinar. If I go into access control device, you can see I've got one of our Minmo terminals added. So I can go into here and it will see that we've got a camera on it as well as a door. And it's also showing the alarm inputs and the alarm outputs for that Minmo terminal. We can also get into the configuration side of things, so the actual settings of the physical Minmo terminal itself. So this one's set to authentication and temperature screening mode. And we can add in our different settings here. And for our more advanced configuration side of things, if we click on the blue link there, 
it'll then take us into the actual back end of the Minmo terminal itself. So there's no need for us to log into the web front end or go to the device itself. Um, there isn't an, even a need for us to put in the actual device password again. Hike Central's already authenticated me as having permission to be able to access that device. So it's allowed me to gain it access to the system um, just with my Hicksentral credentials. Hicksentral's authenticated me as having those rights uh, to the actual unit. And then through our through the other menus, we've got the dock stations, which are your body-worn side of things, uh, recording servers, which will be your P-Store record storage, and we've also got stream servers as well. Um, these are generally used on sites where you're needing a lot of people to be able to view multiple cameras or where you haven't displayed all of your cameras in multiple locations. Um, this allows you to split your bandwidth across multiple servers as well as your streams as well. So it's less intensive on the actual recorder side of things. Um, so these are the cameras and these stream servers can take in those uh, video streams from those devices and then multiply them out uh, to your different users through the Hike Central system. So if we go into the area, so this is where you can set up your different groups. Uh, so you can see we've got our MPR camera there on its own, but you can actually move that. So I could move it into um, our main MBR system if I wanted to, or you could create different areas such as first floor cameras, second floor, internal, external. So you can break them down into different areas to make it easier for the operators of the actual system to find specific cameras that they need to look at for the actual system. What we can also do is if I click on the MPR camera there, you can see the live view snapshot of the camera itself, and I can tell it's taken a new one uh, to update the camera image. This is where we'd set the actual record settings. So this is a standalone camera on its own, so it hasn't actually got an SD card in it. Um, but if we did, we could go to main storage. We can set the default location for all the actual video to be stored to. So this could be the physical device itself. If it was a camera, you'd need to ensure that it had an SD card installed in it that was formatted. Or if it was an MVR, um, you could also configure it through here as well. So Hike Central would manage all of your different record schedules, your a &R functionality, and also your auxiliary storage. So you could have it configured so it backs up the, all the footage to an IP SAN unit, a PStore server using a Windows-based storage server, there's multiple different things that you can do with the storage side of things, depending on what's required for the actual site, which you can always speak to us here at Dynamics CCTV, and we'll be able to advise on that as well um, to meet the best capabilities of the system and to also match your client's requirements um, as best as we can with the actual software as well. We can also configure the actual picture storage settings and these are little shortcuts along the top so you don't have to scroll through to each of the different sections um, you can quickly quick between them um, which makes it a lot easier for the commissioning side of things especially when you're doing it across multiple cameras um, some sites can have 300, 1000, uh, 2000 cameras added into one system and with Hag Center it's a lot easier to go in and configure those you can copy it across multiple sites if you wanted to if each site was going to have the same set of settings through hike central you could apply it out across the board which makes it a lot easier from um, a management point of view with the actual system itself they've also now moved the actual firmware upgrade section for the hike central so it used to be on the home page um, of your web client. Now they've moved it into the resource management section. And what this allows you to do is update the firmwares on your devices that are added to Hike Central. So this can be from the firmware files stored on the main Hike Central server, 
or you can actually use firmware files that are downloaded to the local PC that you're logged in on. This will allow you to apply updates across multiple recorders or cameras at the same time. Generally, especially if it's going to remote sites, we'd recommend only doing one or two at a time in case there's any dropouts in the internet connection or anything like that to prevent any issues when doing these updates. But then Hike Central will automatically go through each one. You're not having to log into each of the devices on the site and then put in your upload the actual firmware files, Hike Central will take care of all that side of things, uh, which makes it a lot easier from the maintenance point of view as well for installers. Now if we go back into our menu again, um, obviously there's a lot of stuff um, in version 2.0, so I'm just going to cover some of the main kind of headlining features. Uh, what we will be doing is doing demo videos going forward, which will be uploaded uh, over the coming weeks, showing all the different kind of features that are available for Hike Central as well. Um, so if we go into our event alarm and go into combined alarm, so this is where what you can do is actually set up an event that's triggered to actually arm an event on another camera, it could even be on a different site entirely if you wanted to with the Hike Central platform. So if we go to add combined alarm, and if we set our trigger area to be our main MVR and just call this webinar, we can also configure it to ignore recurring alarms. So if there's multiple alarms that are getting triggered all the time, you can set to ignore those. Um, so it will only re-trigger after a prolonged period of time, which you can set in seconds, all the way up to 1,800 seconds uh, for the system. So once we set that, if we click on save, we're now prompted to add in an arming schedule. So if we click on add here, And then you can see we've got an all day template, a weekday and a weekend template. I'm just going to go with an all day template for this demo. Click on save. And now it's asking us to set the conditions. So the event source and the type to trigger the actual alarm itself. So if we click on the add button there. So there's different types of logic that we can actually choose from. So if all the events occur at the same time, then you can then set it to trigger something. So if you, for example, you had um, line crossings set up on your external cameras and all those cameras were triggered at the same time, you can have it put in the, the building into lockdown, for example. So all the actual doors in the building would lock automatically using the Hype Central software. What we're gonna set up is if event A and event B occurred at the same time, then it will trigger another event on the system. And these need to occur within three seconds of each other. So if we click on the plus icon there to set up our first event, and I just want it to be a camera event, and we're going to use motion detection. So I can search that in there, select motion, select source and ours is going to be our car park camera which i'm going to use car park 4. i'm going to save that and what i want to link it with is the actual ampr camera that's on the outside of our building as well so if i click on not on that one sorry on the plus icon next to it so these two events would need to be triggered I search for vehicle and go to vehicle features. Click on the drop down again, and we want a license plate mismatched event. And anyone that's not on our vehicle list called visitors will actually trigger this event. And we also need to select our source, which is the MPR camera, and then click save. So, what this means is both the motion detection and the MPR camera need to be triggered within three seconds of each other and then we can then set it to trigger 
an actual system event. So this will trigger to LIME recipient so you can actually test it. But if I create a trigger here, there's a different whole list of different things that we can actually set up to trigger once both of those events are actually triggered on the system. So we can trigger a PEZ for this one, and I'm going to link our training building PEZ, which is just there. And I'm going to set it to go to preset two, for example. Um, you can have it go to a patrol, a pattern, if it's PEZ. Um, we can even add in multiple events on here as well. Um, so if I click on save that one and then scroll down, I can add in a secondary event. So I can have it trigger audible warning. And so as you've got text-to-speech um, software installed with the control client on any operator's PC, when both these events are triggered, it will play a message saying multiple events have been triggered um, from the control client. So that's our first one there. So I can click on Save, and that saved that as a combined LIME event on the high central system. So both the motion detection and the MPR camera both need to be triggered, and that would then trigger uh, the PEZ to go preset two, and also send an audible one alert out to our users as well on the actual system. If we go into our system configuration section, uh, so this has been streamlined now, so there's not a whole host of options down the left hand side. Hikvision have made it a lot easier um, to go through these kind of sections, but they are relatively similar uh, to what you'd expect. So we have the option to set up our NTP, our one access if we were set, need to be able to connect to the server remotely from various sites. We can also set the data retention. So we do get asked about this quite a lot, especially with access control systems where you need to be able to set exactly how long uh, any information is stored for by the system, which with Hike Central, you can actually set this. So it can be a minimum of three years and a maximum, uh, sorry, a minimum of three months and a maximum of three years uh, of a date retention period within the Hike Central logs and the data that it actually stores, which can be set up there. We can also set the system to use HTTPS for the transfer protocols. So this uses HTTPS encryption, uh, which would also change the connection port that you'd use for the web front end, and also to access the system via the control clients uh, for the video software as well, uh, which we're going to take a look at in a moment. What I also wanted to show you was the vehicle side of things. So here we've got our vehicle section. So everything's broken up um, for your actual settings now. So it makes it a lot easier um, going through the web front end. So if we go into entrance and exit overview, you can see there our park and space statistics. It will also give you your real time statistic results on the web front end. It only ever used to be um, on the control clients, unless you ran a report through the web client. But now they've brought in the graphing side of things into the Hike Central software and the new update. We go into basic settings. There's an option for plate fuzzy search. So this will allow you to account for the actual algorithms on the AMPR cameras misreading the letter Z, the number zero, for example, with the letter Q or anything like that, which isn't a big issue in the UK. Ours would generally be the number zero and the letter O, or the number one and the letter I, uh, for example. If we go into our vehicle management section, this is where we actually can configure our vehicle lists for Hike Central. So you can see we've got two set up there. We've got a visitor list 
and then we've got a test list. Now it's really easy to add someone into these vehicle lists. I can just go in, enter, license plate number in there, click on add, and that license plate is then added to the system and any events that we've got linked to that actual list automatically apply to that license plate. So from a user's point of view, it's a lot easier to actually set up, it's a lot easier to manage, and it's a lot easier to update vehicle registration plates through Hike Central as well for that. Which we'll also be doing some in-depth demos on each of the specific modules on Hike Central over the next few weeks. Um, they'll be getting uploaded to our YouTube channel covering each section in depth um, for those. If we go into our intelligent analysis overview, um, so these are the different reports that you can actually set up and you can actually create a dashboard for these reports on the Hag Central web client. So your pathway analysis and your heat mapping analysis, these are specifically for your fisheye cameras. So you can see the, which way people are walking within an area. Um, you can also see which are the higher traffic spots, which is perfect for shopping centers or large scale shops that need to be able to track where it's having the highest footfall. Um, so they can move different products around the store to get them in front of as many persons as they can. And we've also got the vehicle analysis report in. Um, so this is for the AMPR. So I can set up to do a daily report for this one. If I click on add. set it to apply to our NPR camera, add that in, and there you can see it's actually graphed out our vehicle entrances uh, that have been detected on the camera there between a specific time period. If we go into our access control overview, so you can see we've got one of our access control devices showing as an exception and one showing as normal. And we can see further details down here as well. So you can actually see how many persons are added to the system, how many have got the fingerprint applied, face credentials, um, anything like that through this actual page on the web client. For those, so if I go into actually add in person first. So it's nice and easy to add in a new person. So if I could upload a picture of myself. There we go. And then enter in Maddie Earls. Skin surface temperature we can leave blank. Um, you can enter that in if you do know the person's uh, temperature at that time. Telephone number. And then assign an access level. Um, so currently I haven't created any yet, um, but if they're already set up on the system, as you add a new person, you can easily and quickly relate those um, to your specific access levels that you've set up on site. Also the same for the attendance and your face recognition groups as well there. So I click on add. Now I'm actually added to the system and I can be assigned to facial recognition groups, um, access control groups, or anything like that through the Hike Central software. And that's what we're actually going to come on to now is the intelligent recognition. So this is where we can actually set up a face comparison database. So if I go to add face comparison group, I'm just going to call this one webinar, click on add, and I'm going to add existing person. So I can add myself and my colleague Reese. 
add there and you can see they're added into the face comparison group if I wanted to add a new person manually I can put in their details there and upload a picture of them um, to add to the system once you've got persons added you can then go into your intelligent recognition task and these give you a few different options so you've got your facial recognition human body recognition frequently appeared person analysis so if a person's detected on a camera so many times within a set time period you can have that actually trigger an alarm and you've also got your behavior analysis side of things as well so if we click on add in facial recognition just got all this webinar facial rec and then the device for the analysis will be our deep in mind mvr which is an x model unit for larger scale systems is what's called an intelligent fusion server and this can handle lots and lots of cameras that need to have the facial recognition um, applied to them um, there's also the face recognition cameras as well um, for smaller sites where you need it just a couple of cameras um, so there's like a small medium and large kind of device for the actual analysis side of things so we're just going to select deep in mind mvr if i click on the drop down you can see it's got those two cameras listed uh, which we assigned our license for facial recognition and then i'm just going to click on the arrow there to move them to the right hand side and i'm going to relate it to the face comparison group called webinar which we just set up on the previous page we can then set up our similarity. Um, so generally it's between 70 and 80% most people set it to. Um, so we're going to leave this at 80. Click on add. And that's added in that recognition task to the system. So it's using the two persons that have been uploaded to the face comparison group. And then we've set the intelligent task relating it to that face comparison group to those two cameras. But you can have a group applied to multiple cameras across multiple sites, so long as they're actually added into the Hike Central software that is achievable with the system. We then go to Applying Center. Now this is where we'd apply these two cameras to receive the actual events. And you can see the actual status of those there as well. And that is where we'd create, go in and create our default schedules um, to be used as templates for the actual system. All those. If we go into map monitoring, this will load up our Google map, which you can see there, which is our MPR camera. Um, it's just a bit slow loading up on the network that I'm on at the moment. But you can see we've got our train build PEZ and our MPR camera, and that would normally be overlaid of the Google map, um, but there is an issue with our connection by the looks of things from there. So what we'll do now is we'll just move over onto the Hick Central control client. So the web client is generally what we'd class as the backend configuration side of things, the administration side of it. The control client is generally what operators would use, and it's the front end of where you'd view cameras, play back, and receive all your different events. So if I log in here, to load <laughs> I bring this across make this full screen 
So you can see this is the dashboard that I've got configured on our system. So in the top left hand corner, I've got the health monitoring tile. I've got our MPR camera live streaming, and I've also got our training built in PEZ. I've then also set up a vehicle section. So as vehicles drive in and out of our car park, this will actually list those vehicles as they've been detected by the actual system as well. But this will only show the information from the time that the control client's been up and running. It won't backdate on the actual system itself for this. It's a real-time kind of result for the system. If we want to edit this layout, we can go into Edit. And there's a lot of different options that we can add in here. So we can add in an alarm monitoring section to the top right hand corner, which is the alarm analysis. And then we can set it so we only want to see the video events and also vehicle events. We can then set it to only display a report, the top five alarm types or the top five areas with alarm. I'm going to select top five alarm types and then click save. So it'll actually list those as they're triggered. So the highest triggered alarm will show the in number one, and then it'll break down two, three, four, and five. We've got a person feature analysis. We could go into relate a camera to this as well. Add in those two cameras and click on save in there as well. So it'll actually show how many times a teenager has been shown on the camera, um, middle and old age, elderly, whether or not male or female, you can have that report show up on the actual control client in these nice little tiles that they've now brought in um, for the actual operators. And you can see, because we've got one of the seven line MPR cameras, as our forklifts drove through, which obviously doesn't have a license plate, but the camera's intelligent enough to know it's a vehicle, has taken a capture and it's displayed saying that there's no vehicle, no plate um, that's been detected. Um, even that can be configured to trigger an event on the system. Once you've saved the different modules that you want to display, you can then click on save on there and that's your like kind of home page um, using the actual control panels, uh, which will be really useful from an operator's point of view. When they first log in, they can get an overview of the full system um, that they want to use. And if it's a camera, we can double click to bring it up in full screen, uh, just as we would with a normal system. And we can use our PTZ there as well for the actual system and drag this around using our controls. Now, if I exit that, I can then, in the top left-hand corner, so similar to the actual web client, they've kept the kind of interface the same for the actual menu, menu style. Same across both the web client and the control client. So when you're switching between the two, if you have a user that needs to use both, it makes it a lot easier and a lot simpler to actually use. If we go into our monitoring section, this is where we do any live view or playback uh, for the actual full Higgs Central system. So if I bring up, for example, Car Park 4, you can see that's bringing in the actual live view of the camera straight away there. And you can pull in multiple cameras just by double clicking on them there, which will automatically create their own layout. Or you can go in and configure your own, depending on what you want to be able to display to the system on site. I'll stop the live view on those and then on the Monitoring section, if I search for PEZ, you can then see it's actually searched for any cameras that are listed that are called PEZ. Now I just want to open up our 
three are external PEZ, just to show one of the, the functionalities with the PEZ control. So if I click on the PEZ control icon in the bottom there, I can actually draw a square on screen and the PEZ will go to that point. And if I draw a square in the opposite direction, it will zoom out uh, for the system. And I can still drag round. The further that you pull away, the bigger the arrow gets and the quicker the PEZ will move. So it gives operators more control and makes it easier for them to focus on certain areas of the actual system. So you can see that there. And I can focus in on our bench out the side there. for the actual system. So that's just a quick um, look at the new Hicks Central 2.0. I'll just switch back over to my slides. Just a couple, just wait to finish off with. So with the Hike Central software, um, we also now sell the Secure Logic servers, which we've had custom built to run the Hike Central VMS software. So we've got the HC web server, which is for running the back end server side of Hike Central, um, which can be scalable to manage up to 3,000 cameras using a single server, or up to 10,000 using a distributed system. We also have control client workstations that we've had put together. Um, so we've got a medium unit and a high-end unit with different de decoding capabilities depending on what the operators need to be able to view on site any given time and different options when it comes to monitor outputs. Um, if you speak to ourselves, we'll be able to recommend the best one uh, for your site, make any recommendations based on the hardware. Um, between the two units as well. And I just wanted to quickly mention our project support here at Dynamic CCTV. Um, so if you have any projects that you'd like us to help you work with, if you need any help specifying for a project or any questions about the Hike Central VMS platform, then please feel free to get in touch with myself and the rest of my team at project at dynamic-cctv.com and we'll be able to help with any inquiries there. So I've hoped you've enjoyed the webinar today. Um, if you are going to end before the Q&A section, if the webinar should redirect you to a feedback page, I'd be very grateful if you could give us any feedback um, that you can regard in the webinar. It helps us to improve things going forward and make them as best we can for our customers. And now I'll start going through the Q&A section um, that we have. And if you'd rather email me any questions, uh, my contact details are on screen there as well. So Arja has asked, does the visual tracking element work in playback mode? So what it will do when you're using the visual tracking option within the live view, it actually saves what you're doing. Um, so if you're following a suspect across multiple cameras, it'll actually save um, that process and cut the footage so that it will be one smooth image stream from the actual camera. So when you download it, it's just basically you tracking between the multiple cameras. They'll all be joined up in one video clip. Um, but I'll send you a short video that I've done showing that in action. Um, actually, I'll send that across. Mike has asked, is there any end user video demonstration of some of the features, but not necessarily how to set them up? Um, so there is going to be quite a few different uh, demo videos um, that myself and my colleagues are currently working on, and those will get uploaded to our YouTube channel in the next couple of weeks. Um, is there still a version for demo slash test purposes? Um, so yeah, Mike, I will send you um, over some details regarding the demo version um, to be able to test the Hike Sentinel software as well. 
um, I'll look at sending that over. And I think that's all the questions there that are showing. Um, so if you have any other questions, please feel free to contact us. Um, my contact details and our project inbox details are on screen there. Well, thank you for joining me today. I hope you found th this webinar useful and learned a bit more about the Hike Central platform and also the new Hike Central 2.0 update, which brings a lot more features in the system and whole new interface for the actual software. Um, and I look forward to seeing you on the next webinar. Thank you. Bye.